Hi crafters, Raquel here with Paints and Glitter. Today I'm introducing you to the Festive Frames and Baubles die set from Tonic Studios. This contains 17 pieces. As you can see here, it will create a Christmas ornament using this particular die here. And it also comes with these gorgeous decorative pieces and panels that I'm going to share with you, along with some ivy leaves, a little snowflake, little Christmas trees here, or just greenery if you wanna look at it like that. And then there are these particular panels, for instance, this one here, which has the tree and then little stars, right, as a little sky line there. And they couple together with this unique piece here, which I think is super neat. It has a little tree on the top and a little tab at the bottom. And there are little stars that you can use independently. There's this piece here, it's a support piece. And then there is the holly and ivy panel along with this plaid one and another one of these frames. So depending on how you want to use your little inlay pieces, you may want to use both of the frames or you may want to use just one. To build this, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to go about it. I think it's so absolutely gorgeous. But for the basic construction, you will need a total of five foundation pieces. You're going to be folding every single one of them in half. And I'm just using the classic card from Tonic Studios. And then make sure you burnish all of them, as you see here. And there's so many possibilities with this die set. It only has 17 pieces. But just like all of the Tonic Studios dies, it is absolutely adorable in the sense that you can mix and match to your heart's content and come up with so many different varieties. So once you have those folded, then you're going to have these little panels. And as you can see here, what I've done with mine is I actually took an ivy, iced ivy glitter marker from Nuvo, and all I did was color the edge. So you'll need a total of five. But then as I was mentioning these little panels that you have available to you, you can cut into those, into these, for instance, using any one of those. And that's up to you. What I've done is I've cut into two of them and I've also gone ahead and used that glitter marker on the perimeter along with the little tree that you see there. And then I'm also going to take this other marker. This is a dual dot marker in platinum gold. And I'm only going to color on the inside edge here of the little clouds, the little star, and that's just to give it a little bit of a drop shadow because I actually also cut this out the same shape using the smaller frame die that I had mentioned. So what I've done is that I've taken this frame die here along with that insert verso die and I've cut into the specialty cardstock that you see here. And now I have this little scene independent of the background that I can adhere right on top. And of course you can do this in any color you like or any combination that you like. But I took some specialty card that I thought was so beautiful and I'm just going to put place it right on top, but I am going to kind of pull it over a little bit so as to get that little bit of glitter shadow there. And I just thought that that would be so pretty. So I did do that twice, and there's a reason for that. Now, along with this, you can decorate the top of those panels using another little tree that you can cut out using this die set. And you can also decorate them using those other decorative panels. So what I've done is that I cut three of them using this gorgeous ombre card. So let me show you the papers that I'm using. Ice Rink is the specialty card that I used here. And then I've used Ombre of Lesson Green for the larger of the little rectangles, that's what I could call them. And then I've also used Ruby Red Mirror Card from Tonic Studios for the other decorative panels here. So all you have to do is to layer these and get them ready for assembly. Now you can do it in the order that you wish. I think it's better to apply 
all of the layers possible while your paper is still flat because it does make for easier assembly. And this is going to end up with a curved line. So I do recommend that you use wet adhesive if you're going to layer the panels as such. And then as it's drying, you can actually manipulate that paper by holding it with your fingers so that that beautiful mirror card does not crack when you're folding it or shaping it is the word I should say. So just go ahead and layer your pieces like that. Now again, you can do all five panels like this because you will need five of these to complete your little bobble. And you can alternate them as you like, which is what I'll be doing today. And again, it's just holding that gently. You don't have to pull on it or anything because you don't want any fold lines. Okay, so while those are drying, and these are... To assemble your bobble, you're going to be needing five pieces that look like this. This is going to be your foundation. And then you're going to need 10 pieces that look like this. And as you can see, I've already decorated mine. So I have mine over here all stacked together. And what this is going to do is help to join these pieces to make it into your little three-dimensional ornament. So the first thing that you can do in order to hide these little tabs is that you can actually apply adhesive here. And I find this to be the easier way to go about it and just match this up with that score line that's right at the top here. And that score line is going to be very visible. The die is going to score that paper for you. And once you've applied the adhesive there, then you can match the other side. Apply some adhesive there. And then join that together, matching that little curve little pretty scallop and then you can go ahead and apply some pressure and you're going to do the same thing for the bottom portion here so in this case because I want this pretty paper to face the bottom of the bobble I'm actually going to apply my little paper this way pretty side down and that's personal preference So I'm actually going to make sure that that little scallop meets this piece here. Join in or match up that score line. And then do the same thing on the opposite side. And you're going to see that this comes together rather quickly. So you're maybe wondering what is the point of assembling the piece this way? And what I can tell you is that each one of these is essentially going to be its own little aperture. So what I've done is use the ombre glitter card and I've cut this paper using the same die that I used for the base. And all I did was cut away that top and bottom portion. And then I also cut it in half. So you can cut it down as you like. But now this is going to hide those little seams on the tabs there. So I'm actually going to nestle these inside and you get to pick which side you want to be, wh whichever color, it depends on the paper you're using. In my case, I'm using this gorgeous ombre glitter card. So I am going to apply some adhesive here. And this is my personal preference. I know what the instructions say, <laughs> but I craft as I see fit. Whatever is comfortable for you, however. This is just one option, of course. Now I'm only going to make two that look like this. Okay. So now I've got my glitter card inside and this is gonna be my little aperture. Okay, so I've got that pretty shiny paper facing up there, facing the bottom. 
And now I've got this little seam here that I can fill. So there are dies included that will also cut out these gorgeous little trees. So then of course you can choose whichever papers you see fit to place inside. And this is why I decided to place that pretty mirror card facing down. That's because I wanted this little area there to have room for these little tabs. So you can fold these and you're going to notice that one of them faces the side because you're then going to nestle this in here behind that little tab. There's a little slit right there. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to move my fingers out of the way, of course. <laughs> but you don't want that tab to cover that little slit. So you're going to place the little tab right behind it. And then this is going to give you a little tab that you can also adhere to the side to give this a little bit more leverage there or support. So I'm going to start here. Just add a tiny bit of adhesive to that little tab at the bottom. Actually, I'll do both, just a little drop. And again, I'm going to place that little tab right at the bottom. And then try not to fiddle with it too much. Just push the paper back as far as it'll go in here. There we go. And then at the same time, I'll go ahead and press on that little tab on the side. You can pull it forward so that it kind of meets the front of this here. Because it'll shape to the bottom of the paper there on this edge. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And if you see there, there's that little tab facing the bottom now. And also the tab adhered to the side. You may want to be whoop, a little bit more careful. So allow that some time to dry. Okay. Then you can set these aside for just a moment. The rest of these, I am not going to decorate the, the inside. What I'll do is that I'm going to go ahead and apply my little tabs as I had done the others on the top and also on the bottom. So I'm going to do this three more times and I'll be right back. Now, just to give you a little tip, when you're doing this type of a 3D crafting, if you're making many of these, I would suggest you do it in a little bit of an assembly line style. So as you can see here, I've applied both of these little support pieces on the top and on the bottom on one side of this little bobble piece. And what I'll do now is that I'll apply adhesive on the opposite side on those little tabs. And because I know that I'm going to match these up, I'm simply going to follow again that score line, press my paper in place, do the same thing on the bottom support piece, making sure that this paper has full coverage there and that it's nice, nicely positioned. And then I can go ahead and apply some pressure with my paper creaser. And I'm done with that. So again, you would have needed for this particular bobble three pieces that look exactly the same. And then two that have the decorations on the inside with the little trees. And the reason I did not decorate these is because of the way that I'll be finishing them. However, I want to adhere these back to back. So I'm going to apply adhesive here. I want these to be on the outside of the bobble. So I'm going to adhere these back to back first. And there's a reason for it because I'm going to be placing this on my Christmas tree and I know that it's going to kind of twirl about. And so I want it to be pretty on both sides. As you can tell, one of them is larger than the other also. What I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to nestle these in between my little panels. Apply my wet adhesive here, and then place one little star. You choose whichever one you like. I'm going to take a piece of Craft Perfect double-sided tissue tape, and I'm going to place it right on top there. And just kind of double this up. 
then I'm going to double this up with an ample amount of wet adhesive here, making sure that it reaches the edge and the little piece at the top. And this is where I'm going to place my next panel here, making sure to match them up really well. Now, if you would like to, of course, you can use clips and then hold these pieces of paper together so that you get a nice flat application there and allow this plenty of time to dry. I really like Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive because I find that it gives me the perfect drying time and enough time to apply pressure to the paper as I'm creating my 3D projects. So as you can see, now that little star is nestled right underneath there. Okay, now I'm going to continue with my next piece here. As you can see, I've placed the second little star a little bit higher than the first one because of course it's shorter, but I've placed a generous amount of adhesive there and now I'm going to place the next one right on top. And this is why I wanted to alternate them. That way I wouldn't get the same scene back to back or side to side. Okay, now that I have my little scenes as I want them. Now I can go ahead and start applying my little aperture panels. So the little tree is going to feed right through that little slit in the paper. So you place that one first and then you can place the second one at the bottom right through that little slit that I had mentioned previously and just feed it right through. Super simple and you get that gorgeous little 3D scene there. It's so cute. And then you can repeat this only on these little panels. Of course, you didn't need to decorate the inside because they're going to be covered by this solid one. But it's super simple to just go ahead and feed them through their little slots, just like that. They pop right in and you may want to play a little bit with the positioning of the little tree there so make sure you press in on that panel because it's more solid you may have to push in on that a little bit like so and then of course you're going to repeat this all the way around now that you've reached this point of course you can adhere the rest of the little pieces here like these little trees so I've gone ahead and adhered or cut these out using the ombre glitter card I just thought that would look nice and cohesive all the way around so I'm actually just going to apply the adhesive on the base there and then place my little trees right on top and of course you could have done this before but because I was feeding that paper through that slit, I decided that I would decorate mine after the fact. And I think that's probably the better way to go about it so that they don't get stuck. Okay, crafters, here's my final review of this adorable little die set. What I've done is I've completed decorating the little bobble using crystal drops and glitter drops from tonic nouveau so that you can see there how i've highlighted some of those scallops i've also added the little holly leaves on the sides here and what i've done with those is to make them a little more dimensional is that i just popped up one of the leaves with the dimensional foam squares that you can get from tonic studios so that adds just a little bit more 
um, little dimension there and I think it really draws the eye to that element and of course to complete it I did add the little glitter drops right there to top those off and as you can see it's all just cohesive with the colors I just think it's so darling I absolutely love the way that looks I also made this second bobble and what I've done here is that I use this other panel that has the holly and leaves and I did cut it out with the same red mare card that I had used for the previous one. However, I did use a green classic card from Tonic Studios for the foundation of this particular one. And the same way that you saw me cut out the panels here, I use that die with the leaves to cut out not only the layer to place this on top here with the little leaves and everything, but I also cut into the green panel that popped into the side. So both of them now have the cutouts and then behind there is this lovely paper that also has holly and berries and that paper is from the Timeless Tidings collection from Tonic Studios so you can still pick that up. Up here where the little Christmas tree is and then down here on the little tabs I've also gone ahead and used some foil fusion. So I did use the green foil fusion from Tonic Studios on that, which I think is a lot of fun. All you have to do is apply a very light application of adhesive and then you can apply the foil to any paper. So be sure to take advantage of that if you grab some. And then I did add some little jingle bells and those are just so much fun, of course. And in this case, I just adhered it to one of the little panels and then finished the assembly. But this was so much fun to play with. I absolutely love the results. And I think that you will enjoy this too. And depending on how you use this, you could string several of these together if you would like to. I don't see why not. Add maybe little lights inside too. Oh my gosh. But the possibilities of course are endless. Let me know what you think. Of course, leave me a comment. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. The links will be in the description bar of this video. Just look for the link tree. It'll take you directly to Tonic Studios, whether it be UK or US, so you can get your hands on this adorable little set. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching.